Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Love what you drive. <sighs> That's all I got to say for this one. I've been chasing this car on Instagram for a while, trying to get in contact with the owner. And here we are finally. This is my friend, Adam. How's it going? Finally got in touch with one another and we uh, found an awesome day to meet up and uh, talk mm -hmm. about his uh, crazy build. Me? Adam, take it away. What do you drive? And uh, uh, we have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, just standard 2003 Crown Victoria. It's completely stock. I never touched it at all. You know <laughs> how it came from the police department. <laughs> nah, but uh, basically, just uh, I bought it directly from the uh, township through an auction for $500 originally, and turned it into what you see now. $500. $500 car. Was it running and driving? I uh, did not run at the time. I uh, needed a fuel pump. Okay. But uh, I purchased it with a, a second car that was basically the same thing, just not a K9 unit. And that car ran and drove, and that was $700. This was uh, 2019 before the uh, the Freedom Factory 500, and, you know, yeah. Crown Victoria price hike that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when cars were still uh, available. and Yeah, when they're uh, clean Crown Vic. You know, off gov deals was you know a thousand bucks, not anymore. But okay, so you got it, and um, how many miles was on it? I don't remember exactly. I want to say is one sixty three, something like that. Um, right now it's got one seventy nine on it. Okay. So. And how long you've had it? Well, oh, uh, two thousand nineteen, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. I got it in twenty nineteen. Cool. Well, actually, it was a little before. It was like twenty eighteen, and then. Uh, yeah, I sat in my driveway for a little bit and then 20 I remember January of 2019 is when I got it actually running and uh, started building it so okay so 500 bucks in the fuel pump and it was on the road yep nice um, okay and what police department what did you say it was this was uh, Franklin Township New Jersey Franklin we're in uh, we're in South Jersey right now yeah it was a little, quite a hike for me but um, here we are okay uh, we just do a walk around and now let's uh, start talking details what made you build a well obviously apocalypse style Crown Vic uh, always kind of a fan of the uh, movie Mad Max especially the original and obviously he was a police officer in it and since we can't get you know a Ford Falcon XB here in the United States kind of go with the most a newer most common vehicle police vehicle and it would be the crown victoria yeah uh so me and my buddy just each want to do one so he has a sister car to this uh he couldn't be here today okay but like his doesn't have the turbo on it but he has like a much more elaborate roof rack and everything else yeah <laughs> include some of the photos um, in this video so you guys know what we're talking about right okay so uh, movie inspired car uh, what was the first thing you've done to this uh, the very first thing was the lift on it uh, just started with your standard uh, like donk lift kit three inch lift kit which was just coil spring space or strut spacers in the front uh -huh. and coil spring spacers in the rear and then uh, I just used F1, like 98 F-150 rear shocks were the correct length, so I had these extensions there. Okay. Um, now, I actually, for the rear, I just switched it. Um, I wore out the bushing, so I had to replace all the control arms in the rear, actually, recently with the new tires. And I uh, removed the coil spring spacers and used 98 Ford Expedition rear coil springs because mm -hmm. they're, uh, uh, they're actually two inches taller, but they're also a higher load rate. So they give you three inches of lift in the rear. Oh wow! So instead of the spacers, now there's a full, full spring. How does that ride? Oh, it rides great. <laughs> this thing runs and like it drives like stock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, what are we running for the wheel setup? Uh, wheels are stock, stock wheels themselves, and then uh, like I said, I just put new tires on it, but I was running the same size before in a uh, 255, 75, 
uh, 17, which is actually like a common size you see on like Jeep Rubicons. Yeah, man, these are some crazy beefy tires. Yeah, the Cosmo Mud Kickers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they, they fit very nice. <laughs> Such a perfect fit. Right. Okay, so, okay, what are you running for brakes? Anything? Stock. Stock brakes. Yep. Stock yeah, still work dime, fine. Huh? <laughs> yep. Cool. All right, we took care of the suspension. Okay, uh, I guess we can go to the obvious. I mean, there's a uh, the turbo sticking out of the, the hood. Yep, there sure is. <laughs> now, the whole goal of this car, too, was since it was a $500 car, is to keep the car extremely cheap to build. Um, I mean, the lift kit was cheap and the turbo was cheap. Uh, it's just a kind of eBay slash Amazon turbo. Uh -huh. It was off Amazon for 250 bucks. Uh, it's oh, no. by Rev9, to 72 millimeter turbo, which is actually a little big for the way this is run. But I was mainly going for looks too at the time. Yeah. So, um, wow. so it was a 250 dollar turbo, and it comes in like a kit or <clears throat> no, it's just a turbo okay. itself. Everything else I had to make. Yeah, this is intense. <laughs> Never seen a setup like this before. Yeah, I have the little air filter. Old clear the hood if i just put that on i can open the hood no problem yeah let's go but ahead and do that i was that. uh this for when i go off road around here because i had a problem with water washing up over the air filter which I didn't like so i just flip this off easy but yeah we're open hood i'll just take this off okay and uh recently i saw on one of your posts you said this setup you had five years yeah no blown motor no blown motor 10 pounds of boost with no real tune and it has not blown up and stock internals yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay uh, go go ahead what do you want to do with that yeah open the hood. yeah i'll just toss this to the side man i think this will inspire a lot of people to go <laughs> crazy and wild oh yeah that's uh, so yeah it sees its fair share of off-road use obviously everything's covered in mud it's an off-road vehicle yeah I, yeah i don't baby it <laughs> But uh, yeah, the motor is basically stock. Um, so like I said, it's a 72 millimeter turbo and it's run almost like you would see a rear mount turbo kit. Okay. Um, so most of the time, if you're gonna run a turbo on these, you probably get rid of the air conditioning, flip the exhaust manifolds forward, put the turbo like down here. And that would be the most efficient way to run it. Mm -hmm. I want to keep my air conditioning I wanted to do it the cheapest, the easiest way I could do it. So I didn't touch the exhaust manifolds at all. Uh, the manifolds go into a single Y, which then turns forward, runs underneath the cross member since I got plenty of ground clearance, yeah. and then straight up into the turbo up here. And then uh, oil feed was simple. I tapped the uh, side of the, the oil cooler down there for the feed. Mm -hmm. The return is simple since the turbo is so high, it just runs down here into the side of the uh, oil filler neck. Yep. So I didn't have to like worry about drilling the timing cover or you know oil pan to get an oil return into it. Man, you had all this planned out, huh? Yep. <laughs> so the blow off valve and the uh, wastegate, uh, blow off valves here, wastegate here, or I forget what they are, VR racing or something like that. Uh, the stickers in the car, wherever. Yeah. There were cheap ones off eBay. I think there was 200 bucks for the pair of them and they oh. work perfectly fine. Uh, the only other thing I had to do to get it to work without exploding was there is uh, stock Ford Cobra injectors, Mustang Cobra injectors, mm -hmm. which are like 42 pounds or something like that, and a, uh, a Cobra mass airflow sensor. So the mass airflow sensor matches the flow rate of the injectors, and it's been running perfect. Okay. So you, I see you have upgraded uh, coil. Yeah, Coils. those. Yeah, those are just cheap, another cheap performance, supposedly coils yeah. off Amazon because I had one die on me like last year, so I just replaced them all with the whole set. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, they look familiar, they're the Amazon brand. Yeah, and so far they've been all right. Cool. And you said no real tune, so what are your stock computer? Yeah, stock computer. I do have a, uh, uh, the one little handheld tuner on it, but the only thing you can do with that is a, uh, add a percentage of fuel to the top end and mm -hmm. take off a little timing so that's all i did but it's not actually tuned yeah so so it probably will be pushing better everything if it was properly tuned yeah i've just been dragging my feet on it yeah. so 
Okay. But it would definitely be little... no dyno poles, nothing. No. No. Nope. I decided to do a little rip right here. That thing is wild. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of people ask me if it's fast. It's not fast. It's faster than any other Crown Victoria. <laughs> like stock Crown Victoria, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the kicker is I added a lot of weight to the car. <laughs> yeah, I mean like without we without me in it on a scale, it was forty eight hundred pounds. Okay. So you're looking at about five thousand pounds with me in it, which is a little heftier than even a regular stock Crown Vic. So. Okay, so I see a oh, there's a, a Motorcraft oil filter. I ask everybody, are you a Ford Motorcraft guy? Yeah. You have to have. A, yeah, I use a Motorcraft okay. oil filter. <laughs> yeah, because. Uh, I mean, with this setup, it's crazy, but yeah. definitely a Motorcraft oil filter. And Ooh. the the uh, transmission's a stock trans in it still, which everybody's like, how have you not blown that up yet? Uh, trust me, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I got the car, it was actually, it shifted very, very mushy. I had my doubts on it lasting, like, at all. Um, so I did the J-Mod to it. Yeah. Um, which basically band-aided it. It made it shift a lot better, but still not perfect. Um, so that's kind of like the weakest. If it had a higher stall on it and a better shifting transmission, it would definitely perform a lot better along yeah. with a tune. But, you know, for what it is right now. Uh, still running the stock intake manifold? Yeah. Man. I yep. just don't get it. See some cars that are, you know, just alone, stock, nothing, met, and they blow like a <laughs> intake manifold. And this thing is turboed and yep. all crazy and still running everything stock almost. Yep. Uh, trust me, I didn't expect it the last time. I have, I've had a spare engine in my garage for several years, <laughs> and I got actually I have a five-speed manual transmission to eventually put in it. Yeah, but it just hasn't hasn't had any issues. <laughs> Man. I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't wanted to tear it apart. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna make a lot of people jealous on the internet. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that takes care of the hood. Any future plans for under the hood? Nah, like I said, if it blows up, I got a spare motor. Maybe I'll get to the five-speed manual swap at some point. Yeah. But other than that, I'm like not really, not really gonna touch too much. Okay. Cool. It can shut the hood, um, and then we'll go on to this front end. Uh, is this intentional? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very cool. So and yeah. still works. The headlight. <laughs> I have like once again like cheap LED bulbs uh -huh. off Amazon, and they haven't gone out for yeah. years yeah. <laughs> with a, you know, you know direct water contact so you they're, what brand they're great. Uh, I'm not sure I might have the box in the trunk I okay. can't remember oh why I ask because I get a lot of uh, free LED lights they sent me for reviews and things yeah. so I just it'd be nice to know what lasts and what doesn't yeah all right this bumper tell us about this bumper uh, right after I like guess the first thing I ever did to the car was just lift it like several months before I did the turbo and then right after I lifted it, I just made the bumpers. It was just regular quick and dirty flat steel and then yeah. square tube. I just kind of made a frame with square tube going around. It's welded to the stock stock bumper support in there. And then just, you know, bent the, the uh, flat steel around. Nice. Just wanted something that looked heavy and like it was going to ram me off the road. So you do all your own welding and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, everything that's I did. A, that's a cool thing to know. All right. Moving on, we can see the police stickers are still on there, and mm -hmm. got some bullet holes, right? Yep. Handmade bullet holes. Yeah, handmade. They didn't come with it, unfortunately. <laughs> A lot of people ask that. Are those bullet holes in the car when you got it? No, I had to do them. <laughs> yeah, well, got to make sure it says hot. Yeah. You don't want people touching it and then saying you didn't warn them. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, man, look at this. Everything's so detail oriented here. This is an exhaust hanger, and it's doing its job <laughs> on the side of the fender. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it dumps right here, right, to the side? Yeah, that was one of the things like, I always had in my, idea, uh, had in my head for an idea yeah. right when I was starting to build a car. I'm like, I kind of want a side pipe on it. There's something a little wild looking instead of just like dumping it somewhere else. Okay, you know? nice. You got bullet holes all, all over the side here. That's mm -hmm. nice. Cool. Okay, so let's go in the back. Actually, let's talk about the roof rack. Man, it's got stuff going on there. Yeah, like I said, just whip that up with a square tube again. And just, uh, you know, it's got the spare tire on it. There's a gas can up front, some uh, 50 cal ammo cans on the other side. This is a 120 millimeter cartridge tube for like a tank. So. <laughs> Where do you find stuff like this? Uh, that one was off eBay, but. Uh, other words, you can find like ammo cans and stuff on uh, 
anywhere, even marketplace, something like that. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> now the rear end. Same thing, just fabricated a bumper. Yeah, pretty much. Just I went to a Fazio's, which is a local big metal supply, actually, which is where I bought all the metal from. Big metal supply company. And just uh, walked around, grabbed stuff. So, the original idea was just a big I beam for a rear bumper, but in reality, that had been way too heavy, so I kind of improvised. Okay, we're gonna look under, because we always do. Now, what's the rear end in here? Do you know the gearing? Yeah, the rear I swapped out. Um, it's a 410 gears mm. and stock is, luckily this car had a stock uh, posi differential. Okay. So. Okay, so you got 410s, that's nice. Yeah, once you put the bigger tires on it, this came with 327 gears. Mm -hmm. And even with the turbo, it was just like a slug off the line. Yeah. Uh, so I swapped to the 410s and it made a big difference. Nice. Yeah, some guys, the 410s is too much. Well, I yeah. mean, for a regular Panther. Yeah. Oh man, okay, there's a light bar in there. Yeah, this came from the, the police department. That's all the lights and everything still operational in there. Um, everything's still operational. Yep, yeah, I can tell. It just that. looks like the car is broken, but everything <laughs> works. <laughs> oh, cool, okay. Like I said, pretty much it was a K9 unit, so. Still has mm -hmm. the whole cage in there. Now it's got random ammo cans, gas cans. Still has the strut on there. There is a, uh, originally would have had a remote uh, popper for this rear door. That's why it has a strut on it. So it automatically open for a dog to jump out on. Oh, okay, I see. I've never the, seen that before. Yeah, oh, the cool. controller for it's still in there, but I don't have the remote, so. Okay, I'm guessing you don't use this. Nah. It's like a trunk. <laughs> Okay, yeah. yeah, I didn't know they had this. So if the cop is like somewhere out there and the dog's back here, click of a button and it pops yeah. out yep. and the dog flies out, mm -hmm. ready to tear some stuff up. Yeah, there's just a, uh, like a solenoid inside there that'll activate the actual door actuator. Hmm. And this is how it came, this whole cage, everything? Yep. I've never seen it up close like this. Cool. Guessing it's all aluminum. Yeah. So I don't see too much rust. Because uh, even back here, was there, was there a rust prone or? Yeah, underneath there's some rust, um, especially the driver's floor. floor. Uh, they, the police department already put down a piece of sheet metal for the driver's ah, floor. Okay, okay. And I patched up a little bit better. There's some other questionable little spots in the back. When I got in, the car sat for like a few years before I even got it at the police department. Okay. So there's a lot of like water and dog hair mixture which was disgusting <laughs> <laughs> it smelled like a wet dog <laughs> yeah it stank really bad it still doesn't smell the greatest some days on a hot day yeah, kinda. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, i got it out as best i could that's what i've actually had some people comment on uh, some of the instagram posts like oh you you ruined a classic police car i'm like dude this thing was a bucket when i got it all right? <laughs> Yeah, it ruined before I got my hands on it. Yeah, all the all all the places where there's bare primer, that was already there. The, the classic Crown Victoria white paint just yeah. falling off. The white, what so. was it called? Racing peel? Something, yeah. Something. Yeah, wow. Uh, okay. He puts these uh, fenders on, right? Yeah, I did the uh, fender flares. I had, with these tires and, the, and the, the stock fenders, I kept, you hit bumps, you're running into the stock fenders a little bit, so I just cut it out and then... Okay. All of these on there. Get it some more clearance. A little bit more clearance. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, well, we have a part that says junk in the trunk. Do you mind? Do you have anything in the <coughs> trunk? Oh, there's a bunch of crap in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's up to you. We always ask questions. There is junk. There's definitely junk, huh? So I have yet to meet someone who has no junk in their trunk, especially there's when it comes junk in to the trunk. Yeah. So, yep, just junk. Cool. Cables, Jumper tools. cables, the, uh, the extra gold gauge parts. box. <laughs> I go camping and stuff, so there's yeah, camp yeah. chairs, an old jacket, some extra tarps and everything else. Okay, cool. Anything else I might need, especially if it breaks down. Let's and that's see. like the old uh, police wiring they had for all the lights up on the, up uh, over there on the left? Yeah. Okay. Let's see, what is this? Is this the headlight? Yeah. There's oh, is that the LED? Okay. Yeah, Stone banks. Never heard of that. I'll look into it. Thanks. Yep. I love the little details. And uh, if the guy says, hey, it's been working for years with a hole in the headlight, then hey, yep. it's probably worth uh, 
investing in. Oh yeah. Cool, go ahead, you can close it. All right, yeah, so the way he slams the hood in the trunk, he does not baby this car. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a trailer queen. Okay, going on the inside. Yeah, grab this out there. So the interior is pretty much stock, um, way I got it, except the uh, passenger seat was completely treated apart from the dog sticking his head out, so I did replace the top half of the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, they left pretty much everything in it. Um, I had a couple things, but all this stuff was in there, except for the you know thing that makes animal noises and stuff. I jammed that in. There. Animal noises. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I've had, I had that sitting around for like 20 years. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna stick it in this car. Uh, that was there. And obviously, I just changed the radio and they get extra gauges. Yeah. This is the actual thing that controls, that's supposed to control the uh, the rear remote door opener. And normally, uh, they'll actually have cooling fans on the back window grates too. Yeah. It'll control cooling wow. fans for I the dog and that. everything else. So, like I said, it works, but I don't have the actual remote for it. And if I leave it plugged in, it will draw down the battery. It's actually kind of clean inside. Yeah, it's, well, actually, I sort of. I don't. <laughs> you try to clean it up? I, I don't. <laughs> clean it like whatsoever it's actually dirty dirty right now but i kind of just adds to the uh you know the, the look of the car yeah the car never gets washed it never gets nothing do you um, mind if i sit in it yeah go ahead okay so we got some of the booze gauges here and the air fuel ratio gauge stock everything we got a pioneer head unit and then a bunch of this cool police equipment is that a dog bowl yeah, it's just ran a bowl. <laughs> it is, everything about this car screams uh, it was a K9 unit. <laughs> okay, so we got a bunch of uh, bullets, grenades. Oh, man. Yeah, there's one just plastic from a Halloween thing. So I was like, yeah, just leave them in the car. Man, and a dummy so grenade. Cool. <laughs> well, what is the signature on the airbag? Uh, that's actually uh, Finnegan from Roadkill. I had a Tony Angelo sticker uh, signature on there too in gold marker, but for some reason his like it literally just like faded away. You can't even see it anymore. Okay. But, yeah, from a uh, roadkill. Yeah, roadkill. Yeah, like Tony show. Angelo is from a. Uh, uh, well, he just moved to his own channel now, but. What is this? Is this a light bar? Yeah, it's another light. It's yeah, because it never had actually like a roof light bar. They just always had the uh, interior lights in there. Okay. Man. What a cool build. Okay, well, what else do we have that you want to tell us about, yeah. about this car? Yeah, that's really about it. I said pretty much, like I said, I did everything to it. Um, ain't really nothing special. <laughs> it's Any all as cheap as I could do everything. Yeah. <laughs> Any future plans just rebuilds any besides the engine maybe if it blows a tranny yeah five just speed just spare stuff like that um there isn't really anything i've i've need to change on it so i don't know it's kind of i might redo the rear bumper at some point uh-huh because like i said i was kind of i planned like an i-beam that i'm like that's going to be too heavy so i kind of like improvise that i've never been completely happy with it so maybe i'll change that at some point but okay um do you take this car to car shows or cars and coffee yeah i have yeah. yeah, I don't get out there to them too often, but uh, when I can, I'll cruise around there. Man, some of the coolest builds are usually like the most quietest ones. Like you can't <laughs> see, hear them, see them anywhere. Right. They're not all over the internet. They're just doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, can we hear the some of the turbo noises? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really make too much noise just sitting here idling. Right. Um, until I put it under load. Only because, like I said, the turbo is actually kind of big for like the setup. But it works. But I have to put it under load, see if you hear anything. <laughs> Here, uh, do you want to do what you did over there? Yeah, with I the little mud. I'm gonna take a step back and he's gonna show us. Um, do you need to put your intake on or no? Yeah, I'll do that real quick. Okay. He's gonna give us a couple of pulls over here. Uh, when I pulled up, he was uh, he's like, I gotta turn around and uh, repark it, so. <clears throat> it looks like he's done this a few times. <laughs> 
but man, what an awesome build. It's so different, and I believe it'll inspire many people out there. Get out there and grab yourself an eBay turbo. Yep. <laughs> cut a hole in your uh, hood. Okay, so we're gonna go for a quick little ride just around where we are. Oh man. Okay. All right, yeah, we're good. Said a little faster <laughs> than the Crown Vic. Oh I guess my. I've been used to it more now than something. Oh people. my goodness. I did the pull the zero 060 time was like five and a half seconds or something on through this, which is definitely a lot faster than a stock Crown Vic. Yeah, this is insane. Actually, it does drive pretty well. Like it's not bumpy. It's it just rides so smooth. has to be the wildest ride I've been on. This is probably top five of any car. The lights going off. Okay, here's this. Okay. Whew. All I gotta say is my heart is pumping. <laughs> and that's it. And it'll just drive home like nothing ever happened. Yep. Like I said, the, the entire five years I've had it so far, I changed the plugs and coils once. Uh, like I said, I just did the rear control arms and springs. And other than that, it's just been oil changes. Yeah. <laughs> no leaks, nothing, huh? Nope. Adam, thank you so much, bro. No problem, thank you. This is uh, definitely a very, very unique build. Oh man, the lights look so cool. Is that a backup camera? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't see anything out behind that doll cage, so I had to back up camera. Yeah, through. as there's uh, mud falling off of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything you'd want to say to the viewers? Because uh, they'll be watching. Um, no, they're not as cheap as they used to be. Yep. But even in stock form, as you know, where they're awesome cars, like you can't, you really can't beat them for the money. Yep. Um, and if you wanted, you can literally do anything to them. And if you get a cheap one, throw a cheap turbo on it, throw boost on it. It'll handle it. It'll yeah. be all right. So Just 10 pounds of it. boost, stock internals, five years, no blown engine. Exactly. Man. And like I said, I got that little handheld tuner thing, but the only thing you can do with that is add fuel percentage to the top end and pull a little bit of timing. So that's all I did. Yeah. That's but even before I actually ran without that for about a year before the live wire tuner, so. Cool. Well, all right, Adam. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your time, bro. We no appreciate uh, this build. Never and I, um, follow our Instagram there too. Will I include your Instagram? You have a YouTube, right? Uh, there is a YouTube, um, but I don't really have too many videos on it. Okay. Because uh, I just, I don't know, I kind of started making stuff, but there was a, uh, it was actually under, it was under Hoop Decan. Okay. Almost like Hoonigan, Hoonigan, but Hoop Decan. <laughs> but uh, I haven't really done much with yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, but otherwise, so we'll mainly include, the Instagram. Yeah, the Instagram, whatever yeah. else information you'll have. This video is coming out tomorrow morning, by the way. Yeah, nice, this quick. Is, yeah, this is not going to sit around and wait too long. Sweet. Uh, we'll get it out there. We'll put the info in. And um, thanks, bro. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yep. See you guys in the next one.